Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jordan from PictureMonk.com and welcome to the uh, the brand new, spanking brand new episodes of the podcast for 2016. Uh, it, was, it was good to have a break. It was time to it's time to reflect on the podcast that I've done in the past year and also see what I could do better for the upcoming year. So if you're watching this on uh, on the Picture Monk YouTube channel, uh, you might notice something different. I'm actually filming this in a different uh, different orientation. Um, and instead of it being from the side view that I had before, uh, this will allow me to, you know, it looks like we're having a conversation together and just uh, chit-chatting about uh, about photography and stuff like that. So uh, if you're not watching this on the YouTube channel, uh, most, of the t- most of it's just going to be exactly the same as far as uh, how you listen to it. Um, and another thing is I'm actually doing a lot more note taking, uh, instead of just rambling off top of my head, um, because I know I can kind of go off topic and just kind of ramble on and ramble on just like I'm doing now. But, uh, but now I'm, I'm doing a lot more note taking so I can have everything ready to go. I have all like user questions on here and everything. So, um, it's really good to, uh, really good to have that so I can just kind of glance at it real quick. Um, let's see. So for, for, for what I want to talk about mainly right now is the, um, the, the layout of the podcast, how this is going to work, uh, as far, as far as I think it's going to work. I, I got to see which works better for, uh, for audio and video, but, uh, there's going to be different segments of the podcast going forward. Um, so for the, the main segment is always going to start out as with the, with a news article, um, uh, you know, just funny things that I found or cool things that I found. Um, just going to start out with stuff like that. Um, but the, uh, which is, which is traditional what I did before. Uh, but then going into that is going to be sort of like a user question or a listener question, uh, that's been sent in, uh, and I'm doing one a week. Um, I'll still have, uh, listener question episodes, uh, but I at least want to feature one question a week, um, from just, uh, just a random listener out there. So, uh, that'll be next. And then I'll go into like the main topic of the episode and then we'll do a, what I call a widget of the week. And that's just a, kind of a little, a little gadget or something, a little resource or something like that, uh, for photographers, uh, to, to kind of look over, uh, for the week. And it's just, uh, something new I'll throw out there every once in a while. Um, so let's get into the news article. The news, uh, the, the main one I found for this, um, for this podcast starting out has to deal with, uh, images of 2015. And I found a really cool, uh, a really cool article on IFL science, which, uh, because I don't want to mark this podcast as explicit, stands for I effing love science. Um, but they did a, they did a, a an article that was called the 10 awe inspiring Sp- space photos of 2015. And there are some really, really awesome images out there. If you like any sort of astrophotography, uh, you're going to really dig this article. Uh, the last one is a uh, time lapse of the sun. Really cool video of that. So, um, again, if you want to check the, the show notes for this episode, you can go to picturemonk.com slash PMP043. I'll have everything there for you so you can check that out. Uh, so that's the news article. That's the only one that I really found that I really wanted to touch on. Um, it, there was, there was a lot of stuff going out there. Um, and most of it had to deal with year ending of 2015 and stuff like that. But, uh, that's the main one I wanted to focus on just cause they're, they're really awesome images. Um, if you're not into astrophotography, I don't, I don't know what kind of photography you are because <laughs> they're just great, great images. So, uh, so let's get into the user question of the week or the listener question of the week. Uh, this one is from Michael Wilson and he says, how do I get a blurry background with my kit lens? Um, so normally when you, uh, want to get like a really blurry background, you're kind of taking portraits of people. And so, uh, a lot of people go to like a prime lens, a prime lens, like, uh, like what I'm shooting the video right now is a 51.4, uh, I'm sorry, 51.8. I couldn't get, couldn't get the 1.4. Uh, so it's a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. So with the 1.8 aperture, you get a really, really blurry background. Uh, if you're, if you're shooting at 1.8, um, you get a really creamy background. It looks really awesome. Kind of what you would see in portraits, uh, traditional portraits. And so, uh, you can still accomplish that without having a, uh, a, a prime lens or a lens with a, a more wide open aperture. Uh, the way you do that is there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, you can do it with your kit lens. Uh, what you have to do is dump, uh, dump it down to the, the, uh, widest aperture you got. So if you're, um, if you're, I, I guess a, a traditional kit lens is, uh, probably about 
two, uh, I'm sorry, 3.5 or maybe four. Uh, it kind of depends on what lens you have. Um, but, uh, I would say the, the wide, the most wide open aperture you have. And then you would zoom in all the way to your subject. So you need to back up from your subject and then zoom in, uh, to, uh, to your subject. And that will give you the maximum amount of blurry background or bokeh background that you can, uh, that you can get with that lens. Uh, if you have a telephoto lens, uh, you'll do the same thing. You'll, you'll stop it down. You'll zoom in. It will change your, if you have a variable aperture, uh, lens. So if you, if you set it to the lowest, which is at four maybe, and you zoom in and it changes it to 5.6, that's the lowest you can get. But you have to zoom in to compress that background and blur it out. Uh, obviously you're not going to get as blurry of a background as you would with a traditional prime, uh, prime lens. But, uh, it, it, you know, if you're, if you're not wanting to spend the money right now and you're just trying to want to get that effect going, uh, to practice with portraits or whatever, then that's what you, uh, that's what you would need to do. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the main reason to do that. Uh, uh, I have some examples, uh, that I took with a kit lens, but I think, um, if I can't, if I remember correctly, I'll, I'll show them. Uh, but I remember just zooming into uh, when my son was in the hospital. There was a couple nurses that were holding my son, and I wanted to get pictures of the nurses. And so I took photos of them, and uh, I, I zoomed in on on one particular nurse. Uh, her name is Lori. Uh, I zoomed in on her holding holding my son, and the background is just milky, just super blurry. I mean, it was creamy as you can get. So um, it was that was perfect a uh, perfect example to show that so if i do if i do have that image if i can find that one and i i verify that it was taken with my kit lens i will uh, pop that up on the show notes so you can see that um so just for as a reference so uh thanks mike for the question i very much appreciate that so let's get into the main topic uh the main topic for this episode is going to be what i call uh, make your photos look like the pros which that's very wide open. Um, but, uh, cause I, I mean, if you want to make your photos look like mine, I'm not even a pro. So what do you, what do you do there? <laughs> but, uh, but make your photos look like the pros. That's, and, and I got a couple, couple tips here and, uh, they're basic tips because that's, that's what I found works for, for a lot of photographers. Basic works. Um, you know, the bare bones equipment will, will get you by and make your photos look great if you know what you're doing. So, uh, so number one is obviously research, uh, especially if you're like a landscape photographer, you're not just going to have to go out, you know, you're not just going to hop in the car and drive, you know, an, an hour away to some place and it's no clouds in the sky, just perfectly sunny and, um, you know, harsh shadows. You're not going to be able to get a really, really awesome image, uh, or as awesome an, as an image as you would have if you'd done some research. So if you went, maybe went to that same spot during, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, golden hour, uh, and got some sunset stuff or, or, um, got some sunrise stuff. Uh, you're not going to be able to, 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 uh, to get a, a really awesome photo, um, just willy nilly it, even though <laughs> that there's a caveat to this, even though one of my favorite things, uh, my dad and I do when we go out photo hunting is sometimes we just hop in the car and drive. We don't care what the conditions are in the day, pretty much. We know if we, if it's a sunny day, we're not going to be able to get a great photo or, or, uh, at least a photo that we would traditionally want, you know? Uh, so you're not going to be able to get a, a fantastic photo, but it is kind of fun to do that kind of stuff. So research is definitely a thing. And, uh, with that, I'm actually, after this podcast, going to be recording a video that will also help with, uh, researching. Um, I'm not going to give too much away of it right now, but, uh, I guess by the time this comes out on Tuesday, uh, look for the video on Thursday. So make sure you're following me on the social media accounts and you'll be notified of the video. So research is definitely one. Uh, studying is number two, uh, studying it, I guess that kind of goes hand in hand with research, but studying what I mean by that is, uh, is just go on 500 PX, go on Flickr. Uh, even Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places and just find cool images that you really want to take or that really appeal to you. Uh, that's one thing that I do a lot. Uh, you know, especially on Instagram, I'll just do the explore, you know, go on the explore tab at the bottom and then, uh, just start looking around to other photographers 
And uh, if I see an image I like, I will, number one, I'll like it because that's what you do if you like somebody's stuff is you'll uh, double tap it to like. Uh, but I'll also take a screenshot if I'm on my phone. I'll take a screenshot and make sure I have that to save for later. So maybe they did an effect that I like or maybe they have an editing style that I like or they went to a place that I want to go to. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of that. So you're basically just studying what other photographers do. This is extremely helpful. Uh, something I kind of skipped over when I was starting with photography. Uh, extremely helpful when you're starting out because, you know, you you see all these really awesome like wall masterpiece photos. But, you know, you you go out in your backyard and take a photo and it's not as great as you thought, it, you know, compared to other people's. It's not as great as you thought it was. So uh, if you, the more you study, the more you learn, the more the more things you learn by by observing. And that's that's one of the things that I wish I would have done when I started out. So studying is a key is a key thing. Um, learn composition. That's a big thing. Uh, learning composition is uh, is one of the major things that you need to learn from the beginning. Um, you know, knowing when to use leading lines, when to use the rule of thirds, um, when to use symmetry, uh, that kind of thing. You need to know when, what when you pull up to a scene, what what needs to happen. Um, do you need to do when you do the rule of thirds? Do you need to, uh, you know, let's say it's a, use my example earlier, it's a bright sunny day, no clouds. So there's really no interest in the sky. So picture the frame here. You have a sky right here. You have a cool foreground right here. What do you want to include more of? Do you want to include, uh, more of the sky with no detail, no nothing, no interest, or do you want to include more of the foreground? So when you do that, you tilt your camera down and try to get more of the foreground and just cut out the sky. Uh, obviously, if you're really good at Photoshop, you can kind of pop in a new sky. But uh, but just starting out, that's one thing. Learning composition, knowing when to do that, knowing when to use the leading lines to to draw your eye into the frame, uh, that's a big thing as well. So uh, definitely that one, uh, learning composition, that's a big key. Um, learn your equipment. That's uh, that should go without saying, really. Um, you want to be able to to um, you know pick up your camera at any moment's notice. Lock in your settings, lock in your, um, you know, your focus and everything, get everything ready to go and bomb, you know, pop, take the photo right, right there, right then, get a great photo. Um, this is kind of a, it's kind of a must have if you're doing portraits or maybe, you know, even a wedding. That's the, that's the run and gun situation. And you have to, you have to be on point with your settings when you're doing weddings and stuff like that. So learning your equipment, uh, even reading your manual, even though it's boring and stupid and, um, you know, Reading your manual is a thing. I've actually done, I haven't read the whole thing, but I've actually done, read the manual and it's, uh, it's helped when I've, you know, needed to learn where, uh, for example, I, I was, I was trying to figure out, uh, mirror lockup on my camera. So that way my, my shutter would kind of minimize the, uh, the, the vibration of the camera. Um, all in all, it really didn't help that much, but I wanted to know where it was. So, uh, instead of hunting around on my camera, I, just flipped up a manual real quick, looked in the index, mirror lock up, told me what page it was on, and I knew where to find the setting, and I even made a custom setting for it. So it's, you know, that was, that was something that, um, next time I need to use mirror lock up, I know exactly where it is because I know my equipment now. So, um, yeah, learn your equipment, make sure you know everything about your camera, uh, especially if you got a new camera and you know you're going to keep it for a while. That's, uh, that's a good thing to do. So, uh, let's see settings and limitations uh, settings and limitations you need to know your settings like I was saying before uh, you need to know um, what your equipment is limited to so you know let if you if you are uh, let's see what's a good a good uh, scenario for this if you were uh, I'll use one I guess from my past so I had I was commissioned to uh, to get like a um, I guess a, a knitting show or a knitting expo. So old women all over the place knitting. Uh, uh, I, I was hired to do a, a, a knitting show. It was a two day thing. They paid 200 bucks. And all I had to do was go in there with my stuff, take, take photos of the expo for one day. And it was like a two hour thing. Um, actually probably it was like a one hour thing. Uh, so I think it was on a Saturday, take, take photos of the expo. And then the next day come back and they had a, a uh, runway or a, a runway show sort of thing. And so I had to sit at the end of the runway and take pictures of the uh, the ladies walking down showing the knitted sweaters and scarves and all this kind of stuff. And so I just had to get as many images as possible. And because 
you know, we, we as photographers know that we need more light to get better photos. Uh, and I couldn't use a flash in there. Um, I knew I had to bump my ISO all the way up to 6400 and use my prime at, at, at f1.8 to let in as much light as possible. And so, uh, what I ended up doing was, you know, putting all those settings together and then underexposing, um, the, uh, the images. So just so I can get a faster shutter speed so the women didn't look blurry. And so I knew the limitations of my camera. I knew that I was only going to be able to go to 6400. I knew with the lens that I had, I had to change to my prime lens so I could let in more light. Uh, and I knew to, uh, to get a fast enough shutter speed, um, I had to kind of underexpose it so everybody was sort of frozen. Um, and I knew also going back to edit the photos, I knew that they were going to be grainy because at, at that time I had a Canon T2i and uh, those aren't extremely great. It's at 6400. So, um, I knew they were going to be grainy. Just, I knew my limitations. I couldn't, I couldn't do any better than that. And that's, that's what, kind of what you need to kind of pay attention to when, um, when you're kind of, you know, dealing with the, the equipment that you have and, uh, learning what, what you can do and what you can't. So, um, when you're, when you're trying to figure out what you can do, like for weddings, I, I know that I've been asked to do a couple weddings and, uh, I, I've done a couple, but I've also been asked to do more. I know that with my current setup, I'm not comfortable with doing weddings. So I know my limitations. So that's a big one. Uh, and then the last one would be lighting. Uh, that's kind of a, a general overview thing, but, uh, lighting is key, uh, not only just for flash, uh, using off camera flash or on camera flash. Um, but, uh, you know, learning how light affects your photos. And when I said I had a video coming out on Thursday after the podcast, um, that's another thing that's going to extremely, uh, you know, help with how you picture your images and, and what light does to your images. So make sure you pay attention to lighting. Make sure you know, uh, you know, if you're taking pictures indoors, whether you, it's a tungsten or it's a incandescent, uh, environment to where you need to change your white balance. Um, just a side note, don't worry about changing your white balance on your camera, especially if you shoot in raw, cause you're just going to change it back in, uh, back in the editing, uh, your editing suite anyway. So, uh, I never touch my white balance only on video. Do I touch my white balance? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a really cool thing to, uh, to try to learn is, is lighting. I still haven't kind of mastered the, the, uh, the, the off camera or on camera flash. Well, on camera flash is fairly easy, but, uh, off camera flash, I'm still kind of deal with that, dealing with that to see how that works. But, um, you know, that's something that you need to kind of go into. You can be a natural light photographer, but, you know, learning how to manipulate light and how to, how to change light to fit what you're doing is, uh, is a big plus. So that will, that will, change drastically how you take photos and how you edit your photos. So that's, uh, that's kind of the tips I got. Um, it's kind of hard to, to say, make your photos look like the pros and say, when you get into Lightroom, change the contrast or change the highlights or drop down the shadows or something like that. It's kind of hard to do that because not every image, image represents that. But, uh, these key things, these simple, simple things, really help when you're, you're trying to, uh, trying to make your photos better. So, uh, that's, that's what I got for you guys on that. Um, so let's get into the kind of like the last segment of the podcast. And that is the widget of the week. Um, what I'm going to do this, this week is talk about a, uh, a Christmas gift that was, that was given to me and I, I asked for it and I'm, I'm so happy I got it. I actually have it right here. If you're watching on the uh, YouTube channel, it is called the trigger trap. So, uh, this little device, this little cable right here, uh, simple as it is, um, will open up tons of stuff on your camera. So you take this end and you plug it into your camera. You take this end and plug it into your smartphone. Uh, you download the trigger trap app and then you can, um, uh, you can do tons, tons of stuff. Uh, you can set a time lapse. You can basically turn your phone into an intervalometer. Uh, you can do advanced time lapse where it only takes uh, a certain amount of photos. Um, you can do a, uh, uh, fun stuff like the, uh, the motion activated or the, the sound activated sort of thing. So if it hears like a big clap, um, you can, uh, you can, it'll automatically take a photo and you don't have to do anything. Um, you can do, uh, I haven't played with this thing yet, but I did watch, um, I did watch a video on it and it's, uh, where you can use your iPhone as a slave. Uh, is that right? 
you basically can plug it up to your phone and your phone can talk to uh, like another device like an iPad and you can uh, change stuff from your iPad without even being near your camera. Uh, I've watched two videos on it, but I haven't actually done it. Uh, but that's that's a cool thing. It's kind of like a Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi kit, even though my camera does already have Wi-Fi built in. Um, but that's still a cool option to have. Um, obviously, it's a shutter release. It's uh, it's tons of stuff. So this little right now, it's I think it's about thirty three dollars, thirty six dollars, something like that. This little cable um, will give you tons of fun for for your uh, for your camera. So. Um, if you've been looking for something like that, um, go check that out. I will have links to that on uh, the show notes. So picturemonk.com slash PMP03, or I'm sorry, 043. Uh, you can check that out there. So uh, thanks again, guys, for joining me. That's going to be the end of the episode. Um, I hope you like the new format. I hope you like the new layout as far as the uh, video goes. Um, oh, one more thing. If you haven't already noticed, I've changed a bunch of the artwork that's going on with the podcast. So if it all looks a little bit different, that's that's why I'm I'm changing up for the new year and trying to do a little bit of refresh. And um, I also got one thing in the works, um, and I'll, I'll just leave it at a couple little sentences here. But it's called um, let's see if I wrote it down. Yeah, for we photographers, for we photographers. And so uh, so that's I'm gonna I guess I'm just leave it there. Got like a little tease. Uh, but that's going to be like a cool little thing to uh, to uh, kind of talk about in the next coming episodes. So uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining me in this episode. Uh, I will catch you in the next one. And please remember to rate, subscribe, and review the podcast. I would very much appreciate that. And I will uh, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Have a good day.